Hi and welcome to another MoTeC webinar. My name is Pete Swinney and today's subject is how to work out your top dead center firing angles for your M1 ECU. So obviously if you are doing this you will already have the software but if you want to know where to go to get your M1 tune software there's the link in front of you. Keep up to date with uh, there's lots of new features coming so if you haven't downloaded the latest version for a while might pay to go and have a look and see what's there for you. Okay, part of the initial setup workbook engine details, you need to enter the firing order or the top dead center allocation so that the ECU knows uh, when to fire each cylinder. Now traditionally the old gold box days, M800 days, you had to wire the, physically wire the injector and ignition uh, outputs to the cylinders that you wanted to fire and in, and in the right order. So the M800 style ECU just used to rotate round in a circular direction like a distributor really round the each injector drive so it would just go injector 1, injector 2, injector 3, injector 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, round and round like that and it was up to you to physically wire it correctly. With an M1 we've got a lot more flexibility so we can, we can wire it any way we want and we can allocate the top dead centers so the ECU knows which output to fire and when. So with all these, there's kind of three things at play here. There's the physical wiring, there's the resource allocation, and the top dead center parameters. And you have control over all of them, being the installer and tuner. And if you get this wrong, it's, uh, it doesn't make for a nice engine. Things fire at the wrong times and it gets to be very confusing. Alright, so I've got a little step-by-step -step webinar here for you to follow and uh, it goes something like this. So first job is wire the engine and in the next few pages you'll see uh, how I would actually like you to do that and I'll, rather than wire it like an M800, I'd like you to wire it uh, cylinder 1 goes to injector 1, cylinder 2 goes to injector 2, cylinder 3 goes to injector 3. Just keeps it simple and um, we'll leave the confusing stuff perhaps for later. Alright, so why the engine, 1 is 1, 2 is 2, etc. Get that, that done to start with. Then we configure the outputs. So that's in the output, input output setup, and you simply allocate each output, and you'll see that shortly. We then identify the firing order, list down the top dead center angles, and add all, all that information into the uh, detail setup or engine detail setup in the initial setup workbook. Alright, so we wire the engine and in the input output setup allocation it's going to look something like this if you're going to follow my advice. So, cylinder 1 is allocated to peak and hold injector 1, cylinder 3 to peak and hold injector 3 and so forth. Same with the ignition, you can, uh, in a case of a wasted spark, you can allocate one ignition output to uh, trigger two cylinders. So that's easy, you just have a drop down uh, menu to choose from beside each drive nice and straightforward. Alright now if you were not to follow my advice and leave it in the M800 firing order then your allocation would look something like that. So we've got the LS2 Chev as our example today and we can see that each uh, physical cylinder resource is allocated to the different injector drive as if it were wired in a sequential operation or like a distributor or as in an M800. Now because we kind of allocate this in a couple of places it does get confusing so I really would like you to take the time if you're converting from an M800 to an M1 to just repin the ECU. It's five minutes and just make it one is one, two is two, three is three, etc. Alright, so let's hope you've done that. Right, then we write down our firing order. Now obviously it's going to be useful to know what that is. So again, in the case of the LS style engines, it's 18726543. And we write that down on a whiteboard or on a nice piece of paper in front of you so you can write some numbers down underneath. Now in this particular case, we've got a V8 engine. So its firing, uh, firing divisions are every 90 degrees. So every 90 degrees the crank turns, the uh, engine will fire a cylinder. It's an even fire cylinder. And again, probably this is a good point to note that with an M800, of course, this just works 
and you only need to enter odd firing order numbers or odd firing offsets in the M800. In the M1 you've got to enter this information for every single firing point. If you don't do this correctly then it'll fire the spark or the injection timing at the wrong angle. Injection timing you might get away with, spark that's going to be fraught with danger. So very critical you get this correct. So we've got our firing order written down here and then we've got the spacings of, an, of a two cycle engine or one cycle two rotation uh, engine here so 090 180 270 360 etc so that's all written down nicely now we just need to go to the uh, workbook the initial setup workbook and the engine details worksheet so here it is here I'll just get the mouse out so here's our initial setup workbook and number one is engine details now Mark has done a series of webinars on setting up each of these worksheets uh, but because this again because this was a little bit confusing uh, this TDC setup we've done this uh, webinar separately but really if you want to set up your engine from scratch go through each of those webinars Mark's done on our website and it goes through every parameter and, what, and uh, tells you what it's all about. Alright, so we're on actually the second calibrate box uh, down the bottom here. And in this calibrate box, we're going to allocate our top dead centers. Now we've already done the hard work really. We've got our firing order written down here and the, the uh, allocation of where in the engine cycle each cylinder should be fired. So you can see in this particular case here, we're always assuming that uh, actually zero degrees is where number one is fired. So our first parameter to enter is going to be where is, uh, depending on which way you want to do this, you can do this cylinder by cylinder or in the order here. But let's look at the top dead center for cylinder 2. Alright, so we go to cylinder 2 on our list here and we see it's 270, so we enter in 270. The rest you can work out for yourselves, I'm sure. Basically enter the appropriate firing angle number next to the particular top dead center. You can see also this calibrate box has the bank information. So in the case of the LS, that's a V8 engine and has two banks. The left bank, normally we think about banks as if we're sitting behind the engine and looking at it. So in a motor vehicle at least, the engine's in front of you. And so the left hand bank is number one, is the one, number one bank. And on a Chev we have one, three, five and seven. Uh, the cylinders allocated on the left bank or the bank number one. So we've got them here. Engine cylinder one, and problem with my mouse today, three, five, and seven are all allocated to bank number one. And of obviously two, four, six, eight are bank number two. All right, so enter that information in, and along with everything else, if you've got that correct, you're looking good. All right, here's some four cylinder examples for you. Uh, obviously a very common four cylinder uh, firing orders 1342 write that down write down your four cylinder firing spacings which are every 180 degrees and you get to work out uh, the numbers that get, get entered into that uh, initial setup workbook worksheet all right here they are all right so before you attempt to start the engine as always doesn't matter what ECU you're using we should test that we've got this right so in the diagnostics workbook, which is number five, across to worksheet number eight is our output test. Now these examples I'm giving you today are actually from our GPA or GPR worksheets. They're not going to be the same for jet skis or uh, Artness and R35 packages, but for the GPA and R packages, you've, the, these are the actual worksheet numbers that you can use. So to test outputs, we go to our engine speed reference test speed. So this is the, sorry about that. This is the speed at which you want the engine to simulate uh, running so you can test the outputs. So we type in there, in this example, we've got 500 written there. And then we can choose which of our outputs we are testing. So we can go through and click on each of these outputs. Underneath this one is the six ignition outputs, or eight in, the, in, the, in this case. And uh, we can go through and test each one. Normal rules apply, obviously. Try and test your ignition ones first before you uh, risk putting any fuel in via injector testing. 
Right, so once you've got that part done, you're basically ready to go. Get the rest of it calibrated and you'll, you'll be away. Right, so thanks for tuning in and uh, obviously the other webinars are on our website and you can contact our forum for more information and help. We'll catch you next time.